All right, guys, so this is Tizen X. The reason I'm making this video isn't so much to show off the server to you guys, but to better explain what Tizen X is, because I know most people who are watching this video probably don't even know about the server, and I know there are a lot of people who do. So I'm basically going to be explaining what Tizen X is and what we've been doing, and I'm also going to show you guys, like, for people who are Tizen X veterans who actually have played Tizen X before, I'm going to give you guys some more insight on what we are doing and what there is to come. So to start things off, Tizen X is a 667 revision server. If you guys don't know what 667 is, it is a 2011 version of RuneScape. Now, you guys, I, I know there's a lot of people who aren't a fan of higher revision servers. More in particular, people just aren't fans of 718 pluses, like the RS3 stuff. That's not what Tizen X is. As you guys see, I'm in low graphics right now, which looks relatively similar to a 317 in my opinion. But of course, if you go in high graphics like so, it can look like this as well, which a lot of people like this feeling too. Obviously, you do have sizable and full screen options here you can zoom out and all that good stuff but I like to stay in fixed screen just because that's what looks better when I record my videos so to give you guys a rundown of what Tizen X actually is and how it started Tizen X was made in 2011 okay it started out as a PvP server that's pretty much all it was it was just purely PKing and it kind of stayed a PvP server till the end but uh, through the period of Tizen X it expanded and evolved so much that it just became an everything server PVM you got skilling everything like that, trim completionist, all the features that you can ever find in a server. It's just overall a great and fun server to play. But we always tried to cater to the wilderness and keep it as active as possible. And I'd say we kept it, we did a pretty good job of doing that. Now, the previous time that I had it online in 2016, it ended up peaking at around 270 players. You guys can find old videos on my channel. If you guys want to know more about Tizen X, you can literally just type in Tizen X in the YouTube search bar and you will find hundreds, if not thousands of videos, even including by me. I've probably made at least 50 50 to 100 videos on Tizen X. One of the bigger pieces of content that was implemented into Tizen X the previous time around, which got us a huge chunk of players, actually, Vidic made a video on that. Vidic was making videos for Tizen X back when I had it online, so yeah, he was making videos before me. Well, not making videos before me, but he was doing like multiple RSPS videos before I did that. And he made a pretty entertaining video about this. Basically, this is Tizen X Global Offensive, which was a CSGO remake. It literally has weapons in there. You, you start out with armor. It's literally the same exact thing is CSGO. You guys can probably look up Vidic Tizen X CSGO and you'll probably be able to find that video. It's pretty entertaining. But I do plan to revamp this mini game as well as obviously add some more stuff to the shop because it just it, it, the the mini game was fun itself, but it lacked incentive. So we're going to try to work on that as well. There's a lot of things that I want to do once the server is actually released that we're not going to do before release because mainly what we're focusing on right now is just modernizing the server, um, adding some custom interfaces and basically just fixing a lot of bugs that exist on Tizen X prior because if you guys don't know I mean there was just a lot of bugs I mean that's just that was the norm for servers back then these days everything's got to be clean everything's got to be perfect or your server's going to be just dead like there are so many Tizen X veterans in the discord right now being like what was wrong with Tizen X before why do you guys need to have it down for so long why do you need to put it in development stages for so long what was wrong with it before what you guys are failing to see is there was nothing wrong with it before but now there is because back then the the standard was a lot lower for a private servers and it's, it's it's a lot higher now so if you were to ask me what made Tizen X so great I would literally just say everything because like in most servers you know they, they have like a specific uh, thing that makes them stand out like their PVM content their mini games their PvP literally Tizen X had everything it was just one of those servers where you just came on and you just had fun doing absolutely anything like anybody could play this server and have fun you didn't have to be a PK or you didn't have to be a skiller or anything like that if you were a skiller you love the server if you were a PVM or you love the server if you were a PK or you love the server it's just really an everything overall just great server around now to save some time in this video obviously i'm not going to go in and show every single piece of content because you guys can bet your ass i'm going to be making so many videos on here there's going to be a server tour you guys can look forward to that i'm going to be i'm going to make a server tour where i'll showcase all the important big pieces of content on ties next that i feel are worth showing but this project is very important to me i'm going to be taking it a lot more serious this time around and if you guys are curious on why it even shut down in the first place for those of you who don't know my paypal account got limited and back then I just really didn't know what the solution was at that point so I, I was trying to run the server for as long as I could while I tried to find a solution but it got to the point where costs were just coming in and I wasn't able to pay for anything because I just I wasn't receiving donations it just it was it was just gonna die because there was no way of me receiving donations so that's the only reason that Tizen X went down I never wanted to shut the server down I've always wanted to bring it back up but it was just
just a risk for me. Like I was doing the, uh, I was doing multiple other server videos and stuff like that. And then John came to me with the idea. If you guys don't know who John is, he's the lead developer on the server right now. He came to me and he was like, man, let's just bring the server back. I'll take over. You do what you need to do. And he's just going to code it. And that's what we're doing. I mean, that's pretty much how it's going. We are going to be having more developers come in later on. We do have a couple other developers already that are going to be working on things. But I want everybody watching this video to go to the Discord link in the description. Join our Tizenx Discord. We'll be posting all the updates there, everything you need to know about release dates. There still is not an official release date because we do have a lot of things that we still need to do to actually finish up the server before we can even announce a release date. And make sure you guys sign up on the forums as well. Get involved with the community. Uh, as you guys know, I just love to have an active forum. So sign up on the forums, join the Discord. Now, this portion of the video is me talking directly to the old Tizen X players, and I'm going to be explaining to you guys what we've done and what we're planning to do uh, differently on Tizen X this go around because I know a lot of you guys are probably curious. That's been the number one question in the Discord lately. Like, what are you guys even doing? What's, what's being changed? So as I've been saying, the main goal of this developing period has purely been to just modernize the server and just make it caught up to the 2019 standard of RSPS and not be stuck in 2015, 2016 with all the bugs that existed before and just a lot of other problems really. Lack of custom interfaces, things just not working. Like like I said, the standard was just a lot lower back then. So we're basically picking up the standard and just making the server just look good. Now I'm going to start off by showing some of the stuff that we've posted in the game updates and the update teaser section on the Discord. Now I'm, I'm kind of annoyed here because I've told John to try to post as much as he can here and there's a lot of things that he has done on the server that just has not been posted here like trust me guys there is a lot a lot of stuff that has been done that is not on the discord at all so I, I I can't even address that I am gonna address some other things that are on the to-do list but let's just go ahead and do a little run through of things that he has posted in the discord so um, let's see here so this is the first thing right here so we fixed some bank tabs it seems here he's added timers and stuff like that for potions and Venge stuff that's just basic stuff that wasn't that didn't exist on Tizen X back in the day because like I said it just wasn't a common thing once again this part of the video I'm just talking to the old Tizen X players and letting you guys know what's been going on so we've also implemented this Tizen X drop catcher so you're gonna have this drop catching manager thing here I don't know how we're gonna work that yet I don't know what we're gonna make the requirements are of actually using a drop catcher if we're gonna make it available to all players or not I don't know what we're gonna do with that yet and here's the update teaser section right here so the top of this right here when we first started the project it was a lot of stuff like he was just showing like a lot of OSRS maps that was actually implemented in the Tizen X now I don't know if we're going to do anything with this stuff yet. I really don't know what we're going to do there, but I do think that we are going to implement Zora because I I just love the blowpipe. So I think we are one piece of OSR's content that I know that we're actually going to implement would be Zora, but he did actually put this in the server and it looked beautiful. I mean, honestly, this stuff looks so clean on the server. So maybe we will implement the maps and find out something else to do with it. Uh, could possibly still implement Vorkath. I don't know yet. We're still debating on that. That's all stuff that we're probably going to talk about after the release. Right now, you guys, I'm going to show you guys what we're actually going to be doing before release uh, what's on the to-do list if you guys watch till the end of this video but let's go ahead and continue through these update teasers here um uh, that's not really important okay here's one right here so we've got the um the item searcher where you can like look for an npc and you can see what they drop and stuff like that obviously that never existed on ties next before you can also examine things now and it'll actually show you um it'll show you their drops which also did not exist before as you guys know so yeah there's that um i don't really know what this part is let's see i don't remember oh this is the the gear interface there yeah very clean preset manager before we just had a simple dialogue where you would just save a preset and you would just load it up now we have we're going to have an interface i don't know if it's going to look like this yet we might make some changes to it but either way we're going to have presets on here with a nice little interface to it and we're just going to have some quality of life things like this to where you can teleport directly to your task which is really cool here um here's the new home that we're going to be working with there might be some changes made to this actually i know there's going to be some changes to it there already are some changes that don't currently it doesn't look like this right now um there are already some changes to it but we're going to be adding more things filling in some empty spots as you guys see but yeah it's a very nice looking home the slayer zone 2 which is over here which you can't see in this picture looks very cool you also got an npc shop here which makes it easier to use you don't have to go to multiple different npcs for shops you can just scroll through and see different shops there um oh yeah a little mystery box interface i don't know if we're gonna 
if we're gonna do that or not. I'm still debating on what we're gonna do with that. We might add something different other than just regular old mystery boxes. We'll see what we're doing with that. He's just putting some teasers here. Um, oh, this thing right here. Okay, I I'm gonna show some more of this stuff actually in game here in a little bit. This is a really cool thing right here. So this is your um, this is your completionist cape viewer right here. You can see like all the requirements that you need for max cape, uh, completionist cape, trimmed completionist cape. So very nice looking. So that's all that's posted in the Discord. As you guys see, like I said, there's literally not nowhere near how much he's actually done that's actually posted in the discord unfortunately but here i'm gonna go ahead and show you guys uh some stuff that are on the to-do list and explain like what else we actually have to add before we even announce the release date or before we release the server so here's the first thing i wanted to show here this is a little interface you get for whenever you actually join the server and you choose a game mode before we just had like a little dialogue down there and it was just really unprofessional looking so we have a nice little interface here which actually shows you a preview of your character and if you click one of it in one of the uh, modes here it'll give you a little description down here it also shows you what you're going to start with, and it also shows you a little preview of your character there. Actually, the only game mode we're really missing right now is the Ultimate Iron Man game mode, but here's the classic Tizen X mode. Um, some of these descriptions aren't going to be accurate, I feel like, but yeah, this is the classic Tizen X account. All combat stats are 99 and PK ready, so it's instant PK. You get a nice little setup. Um, this stuff right here, uh, I'll, I'll explain that whenever I do a server tour. That's not really important right now, but this is the normal mode right here. You'll get the normal XP rates and everything like that. Um, so, by the way, this isn't complete as I click over here to the Supreme mode, you're not going to be able to start out with a thousand Darok sets and your character is also not going to look like this. It's probably going to look somewhere similar to the Tizen X classic mode, except with the armor and stuff. The Supreme mode, the difference between that and the Tizen X classic mode is you're going to start out with all one stats. It says right here, all one stats, including combat times three XP, 10% bonus drop rate, unique symbol. So yeah, that's also not done yet. That's, that's not what the description is going to look like. That looks pretty shit. Not very professional. That's just a quick little thing we did just to quickly just showcase this. So the Supreme mode is basically going to be for those hardcore grinders that just want to spend hours upon hours on their account. And you're, you're not going to have instant PK. You're going to have to work for everything that you have. It's going to have a really slow, XP rate, but it's going to be incentivized in the sense that you will have a unique symbol beside your name, so people will be able to tell if you're in supreme mode. You'll also get a bonus drop rate, which I think we are going to stick with 10% bonus drop rate. I think that's a pretty cool one, working your account, working that hard on your account. I feel like you deserve to have some type of bonus there. So yeah, we're going to have that supreme mode right there. Should be pretty cool. Iron Man mode. Yeah, here you go. Like I was saying, there's nothing here. As I said, this isn't complete, but you guys know what Iron Man mode is. There's going to be Iron Man. There's going to be hardcore Iron Man where whenever you die as a hardcore Iron Man, and you'll just get demoted to an Iron Man. Either that, or we're just going to make it to where you just completely lose Iron Man. I don't know what we're going to do with that yet. Maybe we'll stick to what everybody does and just go down to Iron Man. And there's also going to be Ultimate Iron Man as well. As you see, we went with the basic uh, Tizen X classic mode here. So we've got all 99 combat stats. We're ready to go out there and PK. Here's the new gear interface. Still in progress, obviously, as you see. So I've already been recording for a fucking long ass time. So I'm going to try to run through these next things very quickly. Um, I'm going to have to skip through a lot of stuff here because I'm not going to lie to you guys, there's 35 things on the list right here that I'm going to have to uh, read through, which I'm not going to read through all that right now. I'll probably save it for a future video. So let me go ahead and explain some like content changes that we plan to do rather than so much uh, bug fixes because there are a lot of bug fixes here. So I'm going to try to run through some things that you guys might find interesting. So the first thing I want to talk about is the new Red Skull, Red Skull, sorry, Red Skull feature that we're going to be having on the server now. So High Risk Arena is going to be removed. Now, before you guys freak the fuck out, okay, it's going to be a lot cleaner system because I never liked the way it actually separated the wilderness. If you guys don't know the High Risk Arena, basically what it was, was if you, um, you could go PK in the wilderness. I mean, obviously the wilderness would be active you'd have people regularly PKing in Edgeville. But if you wanted to go risk somebody, you could lose all of your items. If you do that, you would just go to the high risk arena. It would take you there and then you would fight somebody. And if you kill them, you get every single one of their items. So there was no protect item there. So we're going to be implementing a system called the Red Skull. It's the same exact concept of the high risk arena, except you won't have to go to a different zone. You can maybe just go like run East Edgeville or something like that, whatever you want to do. But I'll go ahead and read through what I have written here. So you can get a red skull by talking to the high risk skull lady in front of the ditch. So right now her name is high risk arena, but we're going to name it high risk skull. You'll also be able to get a red skull by just typing in colon colon red skull, and then you'll get it. So with the red skull, you lose everything on death, just like how you do in the high risk arena. Now the options here, uh, if you click talk to, to the high risk skull, lady you will get uh you'll be able to toggle on your high 
wrist skull, you'll be able to toggle on your red skull or you'll be able to toggle it off, whatever you wanna do. The get recommendation part right here will basically explain what the system is. The trade option here will bring up the arena shop. As you guys know, you used to get arena tokens whenever you killed somebody in the high risk arena. So now if you kill somebody while they have a red skull, you will get the arena tokens if you have a red skull as well. Now, a concern that a lot of you guys may have is, okay, what if somebody with a regular skull attacks somebody with a red skull? Like how, how are we gonna be able to stay fighting only people who want to high risk. That's that's something that I, I ran through my head and I was like, okay, how are we gonna solve that? And it's literally gonna be completely solved by simply making it to where you cannot attack a red skull player if you don't have a red skull. So you have to actually uh, be both have red skulls and you have to accept a fight. So you have to request somebody to fight and you'll basically fight each other with a red skull and that's how it's gonna go. So there's no PJing, there's nobody that's gonna come in and attack you if they have a red skull too because it was against the rules in the high risk arena before to actually uh, PJ someone in a fight. So now we're not there's not there's no need for a rule there. We don't have to actually moderate that because it's we're gonna make it to where you actually have to confirm the the fight with the other person. So I have written here, the Red Skull players can only request to attack other Red Skull players. You cannot attack a Red Skull player until another Red Skull player accepts your request to fight. So that completely, you know, it just makes it exactly how Arena was, but actually makes it also better. And how we're going to deal with the Arena rewards, basically the Arena rewards will be applied to players with a Red Skull. So you still will be able to get ties and wings. We're not getting rid of that or anything. You'll be you'll be able to get ties and wings if you kill someone else with a Red Skull. All right, let's continue on through this to-do list here so we're going to be adding a trade post if you guys don't know what that is basically it's just a, a thing where you can just globally trade with other players you can have your own little shop in there so you won't have to just spam yell with that you're buying this you're buying that you'll be able to go through a trade post we're also going to be implementing a new custom teleport interface where you can actually see a preview for all the bosses that you're going to kill all the details about the bosses and we're going to be implementing a boss progression system so to make uh to make certain bosses not dead content such as a chaos elemental for example, you're going to have to kill the Chaos Elemental 250 times before you can even fight Serenic. If you guys don't know what Serenic is, it's in the Serenia zone. It was like a little custom boss that I added back when Tizen X was up the previous time. So you're also going to be able to have to, you're also going to have to have 100 of each God Wars dungeon kills to even fight Nex. We're also going to be removing Nex completely from the PvP token shop. The only way to actually get Nex armor is going to be from, uh, from killing Nex. So it's going to be scarce and there's no more ice torba and all that bullshit too so torba is going to be like the best armor that you have in game in the wilderness and it's going to be very valuable because it's not going to be so cheap like it was before it's really hard to talk about a lot of this stuff because i don't actually have visuals to show you guys here let me just i'm just going to scroll through this list right here because there's so many things that i do want to talk about but it's just too much, man. There's just so much here. So I'm going to go down here to, okay, let me just talk about the upgrade system because that's actually a pretty big one. So basically we're going to be changing how the incentives in the wilderness actually work. Uh, for instance, we're also going to be removing PVP tokens. I believe we're going to do that. We're going to make an uh, actual PVP point system. Uh, it's just not very professional to have so many drops whenever you kill somebody. So we're going to make it to where you can actually have it binded to your account. And like I said, Nex is removed from the PVP shop too. So we're probably add some different things in the pvp shop to add more incentive to it but one currency we are going to keep as a drop are upgrade tokens and if you guys don't remember what upgrade tokens are pretty much this is what made ties next one of the big this is what made ties next honestly this is one of the things that made ties next stand out back when it was first made and it's the upgrade system so if you upgrade a weapon here as you guys see you need 100 million upgrade tokens to upgrade a whip if you upgrade a whip it would turn into an upgraded whip and it'll just be a stronger version of it that's basically it's that simple that was the concept of upgraded items on Tizen X and it stayed thriving up until the end of time basically like everybody still used the upgrade system so instead of getting so many upgrade tokens per kill I think you would get 1 million per kill and it was just I mean you never were able to stack it so we're, first of all we're going to be lowering the amount of upgrade tokens you get and make it cost less to upgrade things but we're going to be adding an upgrade chest you know what here I'm, I'm going to show you guys just so I can explain this better I have the text written down right here so let me just uh let me move this over real quick so I can show you guys better so this is the the upgrade system concept hopefully you guys can see this and it's not too small on your screen i really didn't know how else to actually uh, show this to you guys here because it's in the notepad but here's the upgrade system so this is how it's going to work so step one you remove the ability to upgrade an item by right clicking and clicking upgrade as you guys saw earlier i right clicked that whip and there was an upgrade option there and we're going to make it to where you don't you don't actually upgrade with that option instead of it upgrading slash sending an error message replace it with a dialogue that tells you you can upgrade your item using the upgrade chest at 
that beside the notice board at home because I think that's where we're going to put the upgrade chest. Uh, step two, divide the amount of upgrade tokens you receive when killing someone by a thousand. So 1k instead of 1 million, it just makes it a lot, it just looks a lot better. Um, be sure to include this with kill streak and reward boost. Oh, that's just a little note there. So yeah, you're going to be getting 1,000 per kill now, not 1 million. It's just unnecessary to have so many there. Step three, implementing the chest. We'll talk more about what items it'll add later on, but for now, we're just going to get the system slash interface complete with one item, the upgraded AGS, and we'll go from there. So we're going to create the upgrade chest with a nice interface where you can select which item you want to upgrade to. Example, player can select upgraded AGS, which brings up another interface displaying the items required for the upgrade. So the items you're going to require for the upgrade is one Armadale Godsword and 25,000 upgrade tokens, and this chances of a successful upgrade is one out of 10. So it's also going to be a gold sink as well. So we're going to make it to where um, you have a 10% chance of actually upgrading instead of it being 100% for a set amount, you're going to have to charge 25,000 upgrade tokens and one Armadale Godsword. So on average, it's going to take 250,000 upgrade tokens and 10 AGSs to actually get a successful upgraded AGS. And then yeah, it'll announce it to the server if you get a successful upgrade. We also might make different tiers as well. So maybe we'll make it to where if you can upgrade an Armadale Godsword, you have like a one in 1000 chance of getting uh, an Illuminescence or something like that. I don't know what we're going to do with that yet. This is still just a concept, but um, we're going to be adding more later on whenever we actually get the system implemented. We're also going to be bringing back the good old Brutal Whip. So we're removing the Purple Whip thing. If you guys don't remember towards the end of Ty's Nexus lifetime, I was just making, I was trying to balance the PVP because we were very, the new players just had such an unfair advantage compared to veterans because they would come in, they would just get completely destroyed. So I was trying to balance the server, um, but we're going to try, we're going to do it, a di we're going to have a different approach this time around without pissing off people basically so it, it's going to be good it may sound weird right now but they're the way we're going to have it is it's going to be really good especially with a fresh start and having a whole bunch of new players it's just going to be a lot better so the concept of the brutal whip if you guys don't know what the brutal whip is it's like uh it's three whips like binded to one it's on so many servers tizen x was actually the original server to have it the brutal whip came from tizen x some servers call it the tri whip uh i can't think of any other ones that they actually use as the name but it's basically like three white whips that just it, it just looks really cool so yeah that's the brutal whip it actually originated from tizen x but to get that you're gonna have to kill the abyssal demons and you'll acquire three different brutal shards and you once you get all the brutal shards it'll cut it'll require like 99 crafting like it did before and you'll get all those together and that's how you actually make the brutal whip it's not we're not gonna have light whips we've actually changed the way lights work um the we don't have light chaotic or light whips or anything like that that's just stupid we're gonna have the um the nomad that actually drops the nomad's light and it's it's just gonna be a lot it's a lot healthier for the economy there are so many more things that we have that i want to show you guys it's just simply this video is just way 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 too long like i said i'll be making more videos in the future there's a lot more content where that came from i mean that that was literally nothing compared to what we actually have planned for this server and we are going to try to we're basically getting things done that we feel like need to be done right now there's a lot of things that we want to do that we're not going to be able to do because i mean this very limited on time we wanted to release in april we're trying to release as soon as possible it's just things are taking a lot longer than expected guys we're trying to make this perfect for you guys we're trying to actually make this a successful turnout rather than just coming online with a bunch of shit wrong with the server and then just having it fail so it's it's much it's much better to take a, like a couple months longer than initially planned than to just bring it up half-assed and then have the server die it's just pointless but believe me when i say what i just showed you guys is literally not even close to a percentage of what we actually have plan for the server there's a lot of good things that you guys are really really going to enjoy i know some of those were just changes that i was showing you guys um there are a lot of things that we're actually adding to the server that you guys are going to love so just look forward to it man like i said guys the discord link is in the description make sure you guys join especially if you're an old player of tizen x and you're watching this video and you're not in the discord make sure you guys join the link is in the description sign up on the forums that's also in the description um yeah i'm gonna go ahead and wrap up the video here no giveaway winner unfortunately so please i'm relying on you guys to hit that like button okay last time i made a video i think we had like 110 likes which i really appreciate guys there was no giveaway in that video and i had so many likes and it was a lot of support in that video so i really appreciate that guys make sure you guys show the same love in this video i would very much appreciate it but yeah links are in the description guys i'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video thank you all for watching and i will see you tomorrow in another video slash live stream we'll see what happens peace